welcome to the Knit Pug podcast, or soon to be formerly Knit Pug, because I am changing things, but that will get, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I'm Carrie, also known as Jay of Dinner, and the slightly excitable pug is Gadrip, as always. Uh, you can find me on Rav, uh, Instagram, Twitter, although I'm not really ever really on there. You can find me on Rav and Instagram, let's be realistic, uh, under Jaded Knitter. And you can find podcast. Um, I'm not going to give the website simply because it's currently in flux. But you can find us on RAV under the Knit Pug Podcast group. And on iTunes and YouTube, still under Knit Pug. Uh, like I said, there are going to be some changes. So, we'll get to those. Uh, first of all, sorry about the long delay between podcasting. Summer got really busy, and then my computer broke. <laughs> so, techno between technology and travel, I, yeah, I have been knitting. I just haven't been doing a whole lot of, well, podcasting, obviously, because no one's seen me. Um, hopefully things will get back onto a schedule, but probably not until October. Um, so, yeah. It's possible it'll jump around just because if my computer decides it's going to go kaputs on me again until I get it back up and running, I'm working on other solutions. Let's put it that way. Uh, so yeah, we're back, at least temporarily. We're going to try doing this bi-weekly most likely. Um, just because right now that works with my schedule. So on to what you guys are actually here for, the knitting. And because it's been so long, this is going to be basically an entire episode of foes. It's all finished objects, that's it. I'm not doing any of my work in progress, nothing else. You're just going to see the foes from the last time I podcasted until now, in no particular order because I don't remember how I knit them. <laughs> so. Um, he's the only other, well, we'll get to the rest of the, the housekeeping stuff at the end. We'll do the, the podcast bits that you, you enjoy first, the knitting. Um, so I guess first we'll do the one that I'm wearing, which is, uh, it's hard to see, but it's got a little bit of a, a neckline back there. It is the, let me pull up, this is the Shrug and More by Martina Bem. And I love her patterns. I've knit a couple of them. This is, that's one of hers. It's the Via Yante. That's Mabel 2.0, uh, which I just acquired this week and I'm very happy about. Um, and this was done in Cascade Yarns Roslyn. Um, I had three skeins of it, two of the blue, one of the, the gray. Knits up really well. Uh, it's, it's one of those quick projects there's no seaming, nothing. You just have to weave in ends and it's not even a whole lot of ends. It's great. Um, but yeah, there, like I said, there's no seaming on this. Like as much as it looks like there should be seaming because there's like sleeves and stuff. Nope, it's a shrug. There's no seaming. It's great. Um, there may or may not be more of these in the future. Uh, <laughs> so just because it's on top, who is this by? These are the number two pencil socks by the Yarn Nagler. Um, I picked these up off of her Etsy store and I, I just think they're the cutest things ever. I just, I saw them and I had to have them and um, I was knitting on them at work and at a couple of work functions and my coworkers all thought I was absolutely nuts but kind of crazy, you know, in a good way. Uh, it. Most people think I'm nuts anyway, so we'll just ignore that. Um, so yeah, these are done. There are two of them. See? They just have to be ends woven in. Um, I consider things without ends woven in done. It's my podcast. I can do what I want. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so that's a faux. Um, this is out of her yarn, so it's out of the Yarn Enablers yarn. Um, and I have completely forgotten her real name. I'm not sure I have it written down. Uh, nope, I, 
don't have it written down, but I love her yarn. Um, I actually have another skein of it, and um, so there will be more socks made of hers. The other skein isn't a pattern, though. Dude, did you have to pick the one that had a squeaky in it? I've been waking up at night to something going honk in the bed because I roll over and he's brought a toy into bed. So I throw it out of bed and roll over and go back to sleep. And then a couple of hours later, I roll over, back over, honk, dying goose in my bed. He's brought it up again. Either that or, you know, it's possessed and it walks up on its own. Either way, I've been waking up like this for the last couple of days. So suffice to say, the goose has... I won't say it's been cooked because it hasn't. That's just icky. It's made out of corduroy. But um, it has disappeared. Uh, what's in this one? That is not a foe. That's work in progress. So you're not going to see it because there's enough foes to last an entire episode. Um, if you follow me at all on Instagram, you will have seen this. It's not blocked yet. Um, this is the sugar maple, and it is that one finger closed. Sugar maple. Oops, I'm missing one. I'll have to go get it. Um, so this is the sugar maple, and it is by Karina Spencer. Um, I modified the pattern a bit. Uh, first of all like most knitting patterns, it's too short for me. It's a 13 inch drop on the, the seam from the underarm to the bottom. I am 18 inches to the top of my pants. <laughs> yeah, 13 inches is a, not a good look on me. It's crop top. So I made it longer, as you can see. And once it's blocked, it will actually be just about two neck length on me, which is what I was looking for. Um, the other thing, let me pull up a picture. Uh, so that's the original. That's the one by Karina Spencer. And that is the back. So as you can see, it just has a plain straight back on it which I decided that I didn't want. I wanted, um, mine is identical front and back. So it has the point, there's a point, there's a second point. Um, so it is literally reversible because it's the same stitch count front and back, same everything. Um, all I did was I took her pattern, uh, which really nice, well-written pattern. Um, I took the number of stitches cast on minus the number of stitches for the sleeves, divided the remainder in two, and then because it looked approximately right, I, you know, I divided up the number of stitches. So take the total number for the, the armhole, remove the, the shoulders, like the stitches for the shoulder, divide that number in half, and then I took that and I split it so that it has the, the seam for the front and the one on the back. And I just used that same number of stitches front and back. And there we go. And then I had to add more stitches at the armholes. Um, so my raglan's increases are actually slightly longer. Um, and I changed how I did the stitches at the bottom so I got more. Um, and then, because her pattern goes up to, I think it's a 46, and I needed a 50. So I just added stitches because, well, if I'm going to modify the pattern, I might as well do it the whole way. Um, but there we go. So that is that. Uh, and if you don't want to modify it to get a larger size, she actually has two patterns that are almost identical. There's sugar maple, and then, let me just get the name of the other one. And close. sugar maple and then the other one is poison oak which is same pattern except it's done for stripes and it ha actually has sleeves as opposed to this one which does not 
which actually that was one of the biggest questions I was asked when uh, I was showing this on Instagram was, well, how do you do the sleeves? You don't. The sleeves are done. They're just cap sleeves. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it because it's a fairly dark yarn, but there's um, ribbing on the sleeves and you actually do the ribbing before you bind off to do the underarm. So once you've bound off the sleeves, you're done. Which is nice because you hit the end, you bind off and you shake it out and go, oh, all I have left to do is weaving in ends. <laughs> My kind of pattern. So I really like this one. Um, this one got knit, um, I've been wanting to knit it since I originally saw it. And then when I was at the uh, Kitchener Waterloo Knitters Fair uh, last weekend, yes, this took me a week to knit. Um, I found the Blue Brick. And they're uh, the bluebrick.ca. And this is Kilkarni Sock, and the colorway is Aurora which uh, if you've ever seen Aurora Borealis in Canada or actually anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere, because most of them are, that's the kind of colors you're looking at, um, especially this green down here. That's the, the most common color, at least where I'm from. Because um, yes, we got the Auroras in Ottawa. It was nice. Um, I don't know if we get them down this far. I don't think we do. But I saw this and I fell in love with the yarn and I've been looking for a long gradient in purples and greens for a while to do this sweater. Well, I found it last weekend at the Toronto uh, Knitters, or not the Toronto, at the Kitchen Waterloo Knitters Fair. Um, and I kind of fell down and accidentally handed over my credit card and bought it. So I cast it on and I knit this last week. I bound it off this morning. <laughs> might have been a little obsessed this week. Um, now the whole reason behind doing this right now is because end of this month I'm actually going to be in Vancouver at Knit City. So anyone who wants to say hi please stop by. Um, I'll be hanging out with uh, Katie from uh, Nizuko Yarn or Nizuko knits on Ravelry uh, in her booth with all of her wonderful, wonderful bags, which I'm fairly certain several will find their way home with me. Um, but I realized last weekend, hmm, I have five sweaters, like I've got five knit tops. I'm going to be out there for six days. So in my brain, this, you know, my brain basically went, okay, so I need to knit another top. This would be top number six. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that is how my brain works. You're going on vacation. Let's knit something. Although I'm fairly certain most of you understand what I'm go where I'm coming from. Originally, I was going to knit a sweater, and we're going to see how that goes. But I've got a couple other things that need to be finished by the end of this month, so probably not. Um. This is going to be, this is the last thing that I was knitting on um, before I stopped podcasting. So, where's this? This is the Claret Cardigan. Oops, that's not what I want to do. So this is the Claret Cardigan. Um, it's another one of those lovely, lovely knits. And this is by Megan Goodacre. Um, this was quick, easy, fun knit. Um, it's got actually see them better on the inside. You can see kind of where it's got the, the weird holes there. Well, that's not actually holes, that's actually a gather. Um, and you can see the one on the back, I guess. Okay. Or at least I think you can. You can see it right there. Um, but it has a gather at the back and then uh, for the underbust on both sides. So it fits really well. It's just an open front cardigan with a simple lace pattern. And I really enjoyed knitting this. I have a funny feeling I did something... How did I... Oh yeah, okay. Um, the... I know I changed this pattern. Um, I think this one was actually long enough for me, which was lovely. 
um, but for the back neckline here you're basically you're supposed to actually bind off the stitches and then you knit the the edging the the collar and then sew it on well what I did was I didn't bind off and then I just knit and on the last stitch I did a knit two together and then went back and forth with the knit two togethers until I hit the back and then I just kitchenered the line in the back uh, because it saved me futzing around so I've been wearing this one uh, and I'm really I really like it this one I did out of Elizabeth of old silky wool um, and I have enough to do two more sweaters uh, I had bought enough to do this and a matching tank top and then a second sweater in a different color so those will get done uh, that one probably took me that one took me about a month to do what can I say um, that is oh yeah I forgot the other one. Oh well there is one more piece which eh, I'm not gonna get up again um, I'll show it to you guys probably well probably not next week but there will actually be an episode it'll be published late but there will be an episode the last weekend of the month it'll be published sometime the week the beginning of October because Katie and I are going to podcast from Vancouver um, so yeah so I guess that's all that I have finished right now uh, there will be a couple other things that will be finished soon, very, very soon. Because um, I have a shawl that just needs to be bound off. And I've got socks that need, you know, half of a... I think I'm halfway up the cuff on the... Or the yeah, the cuff on the last one. So, yeah. And I have my ink on my hedgerow. There's a few other... There, There's... There's other stuff, um, which you guys will see, like I said, next time I podcast. Uh, unless the next time I podcast is out in BC, in which case you will see it the time after, because I'm not hauling all of my notes out there. Uh, <laughs> so there has been, there's been a couple of trips. Um, I was up in Ottawa to go to the uh, Twist in saint dye in Quebec in August um, and I came back with a bit of yarn from that. I'll give you a preview. This is uh, from Crazy Dog Yarns. Uh, it's the Picture Perfect Gradient Set. Um, this is Janet who is I believe Crazy Dog Yarns on Ravelry as well. But that is going to be made into a shawl that I'm designing specifically for her. So you'll see that later on in the fall. Um, the When I last podcasted, we had started a knit along, which then fizzled because I lost my computer. And life got crazy. Um, so everyone who signed up, um, I have a list and what I'm going to do is you're all getting a pattern um, so if you want to uh, send me a message uh, I'll get in touch with all of you personally but send me a message with what pattern you would like and I will give that to you um, it's kind of my fault that that fizzled so uh, the name of the podcast is changing and I'm changing the formatting a bit um, I will get back to you all with the name change it's in the pro it's in the works and uh, the lovely Jackie from uh, graphic stitches is actually doing up my new logo and everything else and I'm basically redoing all of the patterns and I have a bunch that are almost ready to publish so there should be a couple coming out this fall and then a couple into the winter as well 
Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. You're no help, you're falling asleep. Uh, <laughs> so I will be doing the big unveiling of the new podcast name and everything in October. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much it. Like I said, this is going to be a show of finished objects, so I'm not going to show you any of my work in progress. Um, depending on what I get done this week, we'll see if I podcast next week or if we wait until um, the week after. Like I said, it's probably going to be every two weeks from here on out, um, or at least for the foreseeable future. And yeah, so I hope everyone had a great summer. And I will see you all later. Bye!